Love. Love is such a universal idea that we have a special day dedicated to its celebration. I personally love love. One of my favorite movie genres is romantic comedies. I also love action comedies, but I find myself choosing a cheesy love story whenever I'm in the mood of watching a movie. You could tell a love story in so many different ways, but one movie truly stands out. It's one of the most compelling films I had the privilege to watch last year, and is in fact one of the 2024 Oscar nominees for Best Picture and Best Original Screenplay, Past Lives. Hi, I'm Zinni, and this is Past Lives, Love, Decision, or Destiny. Since I will be talking about a major theme of the film, there will be spoilers, and by the time I upload this video, I have no idea whether Past Lives won Best Picture or Best Original Screenplay, or both. Either way, you should watch Past Lives. I promise you, you won't regret it. Who do you think they are to each other? Mm, I don't know. Okay. So Past Lives is Celine Song's directorial debut. Song is such a fantastic storyteller. She was able to convey a simple story with such amazing visuals. The movie was quiet and you could just hear the film breathe. Every frame was saying something and the cinematography was just chef's kiss. Song had perfectly captured the bliss and tragedy of your first love being the one that got away. And actually, the story goes deeper, but we'll talk about that later. The entire film was just so beautiful. Past lives revolves around Hesong and Na Yang, childhood sweethearts who meet again after two decades. Hesong and Na Yang were each other's first loves. However, when Na Yang's family had to immigrate from South Korea to Canada for greener pastures, their love story had to be cut short. The two reconnected a few years later through Facebook and Skype. Na Yang now called herself Nora, but their sort of long-distant relationship ultimately ended due to their worlds being too far apart. And after another decade, they finally meet in person when Hesong visits New York. But this time, Nora is now married to Arthur, an American writer. Childhood sweethearts who reconnect 20 years later only to realize they were meant for each other. In the story, I would be the evil white American husband standing in the way of destiny. Destiny, fate, or as the film centers around it, Inyun. When Nora meets Arthur for the first time, she introduced a Korean concept, Inyun, or how fate brings two people together based on countless connections they have in their previous lives. If two people have Inyun, their interactions are never random. Every single interaction they have is because they're connected by fate. Moreover, Nora tells Arthur that if two people get married, they must have reached 8,000 layers of union over 8,000 lifetimes that finally allow them to be together. Hesong brings up the concept of union again when he and Nora talk to each other at the bar. He wonders what would happen if Nora never left and if them not ending up together is also a form of inyun, that this is just one of their past lives that will eventually lead them up to their marriage in the next life. Oh, so that's why it's called past lives. <laughs> this is where I ended up. This is where I'm supposed to be. The concept of union suggests that love is destined because it believes that if two people get married, it's because of the countless connections they had in their previous lives. In short, two people get married because they are destined to. But is love really just destiny? Do people just get married simply because they are meant to be? Do we not have a choice? At first glance, it seems like Nora ended up with Arthur simply because she was destined to. Arthur even mentions how they met at an artist's residency, how they slept together because they happened to be single, how they realized they both live in New York so they moved in together to save rent, how they got married so Nora could get a green card, and how everything just fell into place. Nora concludes that this is where they ended up and this is where they're supposed to be. 
The way Nora airs out these statements implies that she ended up with Arthur simply because it's fate or because it's God, if you're a Christian like me, that brought them to where they're supposed to be. However, if you take a deeper look, Nora ending up with Arthur is also a result of a series of choices. Nora's parents chose to move to Canada to have a better life. Nora chose to move to New York to pursue her writing career. Hesong and Nora chose to stay up late or wake up very early just to talk to each other. Nora chose to stop talking to Hesong when things got complicated. Nora decided to introduce the concept of Inyan to Arthur to flirt with him. Arthur and Nora chose to live together. They both chose to get married for Nora's green card. And in the end, Nora chose to stay in America. These decisions made Nora who she is. They made Nora, Nora. And Nora is someone who never ends up with Hesong. We could blame fate solely for what happened to Nora and Hesong. The two didn't end up together because they were not destined to. Or we could blame free will for letting Nora choose the wrong decision. We'll never know if Nora truly ends up with Hesong if she never left Korea. But the film doesn't really provide us with a single concrete answer. In the same way, we can blame fate or God or the universe for what happens to us. But in reality, our life is still a series of choices. There is still free will. So in the end, it's actually both. We can't always choose what happens to us, but we can make the most of the things that we can control. Sometimes, someone just comes into our lives unexpectedly, and it's up to us whether that someone becomes somebody in our life. Even though I've talked about whether love is a decision or destined in relation to past lives, if you actually think about it, this film is more than a love story. It's not about Nora choosing between Arthur and Hesong like it's some sort of love triangle. What past lives is really about is Nora reminiscing who she was in the past and finally embracing who she is right now. When Nora finally saw Hesong again after two decades, she said it felt weird seeing him because Hesong has always been this little boy in her head and now he's grown. She even mentioned how Korean he is and maybe spending time with Hesong reminded her of who she was in the past, that she used to be a little Korean kid too. For me, the moment when Hesong finally left, it was not Nora crying about her first love being separated from her once again, but it's her saying goodbye to who she was in the past, the little girl in Korea who used to cry all the time. Hi guys! So I never expected that I would be having a small discussion on the concept of fate and free will in this video. Past lives is really something. Shout out to Atze Agnes and Siti for watching Past Lives with me. I really enjoyed watching this painfully beautiful film with you guys. Let's watch more movies together. And for my viewers out there, please watch this simple yet profound movie. Anyway, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. See you next time. Bye!